Have you got my screen and is it moving? Yes. Yeah. Hello and welcome to uh, the panel discussion that we've got uh, for you today. We're going to be looking into how you can optimise the cost of scaling your video. And I'm joined by expert representatives from Seagate and two of their uh, primary partners, Actionsoft and Secure Logic. So welcome to our panelists. Welcome to David Thompson, who's sales manager for Seagate. Amir Amri, who's Channel Marketing Manager for Seagate, and he'll be talking to us later in the session about the Seagate Partner Programme. We have the Managing Director um, of Accessoft UK, Yuri, and we have Hayley Joseph, who's Markets and Channel Manager from Secure Logic. The full contact details for each panellist and the companies they represent are already in the chat, so you have the details you need to reach out directly to discuss the content of this session or any commercial requirements that you may have. So let's uh, start off with the obvious question. What exactly is the relationship between Axonsoft, Seagate and Secure Logic? Hayley, I'm going to uh, point that question to you if I might. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Good morning. Um, well, so it's a good partnership, it's tried and tested, but essentially Axonsoft have an enterprise or PSIM, like a physical security information management or video management type uh, software with some really great analytics. And what that kind of relationship brings is a, a requirement for some specialist server technology, which is where we come in. And um, it requires scalability as well, which is where Seagate comes in. So it's it's a nice rounded solution that, that fits together perfectly. Thank you, Hayley. It's good to understand that from your perspective. Um, so, David, where does Seagate come into this? Well, Seagate are uh, a storage manufacturer. In fact, we're one of the largest storage manufacturers globally. Um, and of course, we um, we create scalable SAN solutions um, that sit very nicely behind Secure Logic's server architecture. Um, and combine very nicely with, with Axonsoft. And of course, we, we partner with both Secure Logic and Axonsoft because they are real kings of the surveillance industry um, with real in-depth knowledge um, to, to make the most of the, the combined solution. Thanks um, for that contribution, David. So, Yuri, what is it that makes this three-way relationship so crucial to Axonsoft? Yeah, um, well, like guys, I mentioned, we are the the front end of the security system. So we 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 manufacture the software with analytics, and uh, but what makes us uh, um, exceptional or unique is is the analytics really. So we um, we generate a lot of valuable data, and uh, to do that, we need to process video analytics in a in specific uh, form. So that requires a uh, hardware requirements that are very unique to that um, and uh, when compared to just normally working with video uh, and uh, this is especially so when we're working with artificial intelligence and um, with like to be able to deploy artificial intelligence on the on this in the solution uh, we'd have to use sometimes a custom built hardware uh, with that will use high powered cpus or gpus uh, even vpus uh, to achieve uh, the uh, optimal system performance. Thanks, Jerry. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I'm going to say, like, you know, obviously working with the uh, Seagate and Secure Logic, then the standard hardware requirements, we've got a direct communication with them. And this is where it all comes together because we we de deploy, uh, even though we, we're specialists in, in, in specific areas, uh, but we deploy a, a, a whole. Uh, holistic solution together. Thank you, Yuri, and apologies for cutting you short there. Okay. Um, so, Hayley, let's just um, come back to you, if we might. Historically, the mainstay of Secure Logic's business has always been direct attached storage. So why the move to SAN? Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose really it all comes down to total cost of ownership. You know, um, as systems have got bigger, you know, camera resolutions have increased enormously. 
especially with things like archive times, you know, certain parts of the world will store video for, for much greater lengths of time. So storage uh, amount has grown exponentially. So the total cost of ownership, I suppose, if you look at rule of thumb, if you're looking at maybe more than half a petabyte of storage, the value very much sits inside of a sand storage. So that was kind of where we would separate out where the best value is for us and our customers. Okay, now that's good to understand. And, and David, in layman's terms, can you sum up the other advantages of a SAN solution? Yeah, abs absolutely. So, so in in addition to um, cost, as as Haley mentions, um, there's the scalability aspect. It's very very simple to scale. So, as, as your environment grows, we can um, grow with it. And then there's uh, really important stuff like protecting your data. You know, having extremely high um, availability to data, five nines uptime, as an example. And then when it comes to uh, rebuilds of drives, we, we've got some very, very clever technology like ADAPT, where we can reduce rebuild times, um, factors of you know hundreds or thousands um, to bring rebuild times down to just a few hours. Um, which is super important when when you're recording this sort of data because really you need access to it and and never never lose it right it's it's what it's about so that's that's the advantage or some of the advantages of SATs. Thank you, David. And, and you're in the uh, what's the action soft preference here? Is it on-prem, hybrid, or cloud? Well, each option has its ideal applications, and it really depends on the customer requirements. Um, there's factors that need to be taken into account, such as the budget, for example, whether to use a CapEx or OPEX, um, but also things like network connectivity, maintenance requirements, analytics, and so on. Um, with Accentsoft, uh, we've developed a solution that supports every type of uh, system deployment, whether it's on-prem, hybrid, or cloud. Um, and the way we've done that is we're not just with the on the software level in terms of functionality, but also in terms of the um, the licensing model. So, for example, um, the on-prem solution can benefit from our one-off cost. Um, licensing fee where th there's no uh, additional charges for updates or upgrades. So once you buy a license, it's technically for life with you. Um, but the, um, sure, tell you about examples of where each solution really benefits. For example, the uh, on-prem solution is best suited for large scales applications where you've got a lot of um, requirement to process analytics uh, and that obviously demands uh, higher um, processing power um, to try to then the cloud can be quite costly. Um, hybrid is technically a distributed uh, system architecture. So you've got some hardware that's on site and some of the uh, processing and data storage is done offsite in the cloud or private cloud. Um, and obviously you can then kind of have a, a best of both worlds um, and um, also in terms of budgets of uh, capex and opex um, budget types um, utilization in that and cloud is where mainly you've got um, all the processing and storage is done in the cloud so the cameras and integrated systems they connect uh, well push data straight to the cloud and everything's done out there um, so we, there's applications for each and we work with our clients to find the most optimal solution for them uh you know whether it's on premise or going to the cloud or when sometimes it could be a phase and in between there'll be a hybrid solution okay so thanks for that yuri you, you know you've covered off on-prem hybrid and cloud where does each of these play its part what are the decision points for choosing which option to go with Hayley, perhaps you can answer that for us initially. Yeah, of course. So obviously the cloud is, is coming now. You know, it's, it's this the future. Um, but I think the biggest kind of barrier at the moment would be for, for a, certainly our customer base would be infrastructure. So if you take an average kind of high definition CCTV system of, say, I don't know, 80 cameras, you're looking at probably a, gig, a gigabit pipe to get up to the cloud, which... You know, and if you want resilience, for example, that would that would double to a two gig pipe. So in terms of the, you know, the availability of that kind of infrastructure, you know, there are certain parts in the world that can support that. 
even where it does, it can still be quite cost prohibitive at the moment. So we tend to find a, a, like a hybrid approach, as, as Yuri mentioned, is, is preferable, you know, the, the main drive of the system sitting on the on-prem and then kind of critical sort of data for, for alarms and things going up to the cloud. So the Secure Logic team, uh, much like the partners that are here today, can actually discuss on a project by project basis, what's best for each individual project in terms of all of those subjects. Thank you, Hayley. And, and David, your thoughts, please? Yeah, well, um, as well as being leaders in on-prem storage, Seagate um, also have a cloud offering. So that gives us, you know, the best of both worlds um, for sure. Um, our cloud is very suitable to, to the uh, surveillance marketplace in the fact that um, we don't have any uh we don't have any ingress or egress charges it's a it's a it's a capacity based model um and that really gives us solutions for both on prem or hybrid solutions um exactly as 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 is mentioned from both um secure logic and accent soft so yuri would you just sort of close that one down and expand out with your opinion please yeah of course um like I just mentioned, um, the there's application for every, uh, for every option, <laughs> and um, like it, from access to points of view, how we utilize this even further is, for example, with analytics, we can uh, we can um, store the event data into a cloud. Uh, so obviously provides the uh, fault tolerance and resilience uh, in, in case of the hardware failure on on site. But at the same time, it can be it can offer that scalability. Um, so uh, if, if the the number of events or um, incidents is um, grown in, in a certain sp period of time, obviously that can if if you got like a, a rigid storage system uh, on on premise. Uh, you, you might need to rely on to using a cloud um, services to be able to uh, accommodate for that um, short term, in, you know, increase in, in, in data um, and our integration with uh, Seagate's live um, solution um, is really good because it allow it, it, reduce, it removes the uh, requirement to have a middleware because sometimes the object storage in the cloud will require um, some sort of a, a middleware to be able to convert the data into a specific format. Uh, well, with that integration, it's pretty straightforward. And uh, another advantage of, of that integration is the cost. Um, standard cloud providers, they can charge for every time you uh, put data and take it out or touch the data uh, in the cloud. Uh, whereas with, with uh, Seagate, it's, um, it's a, a lot more uh, transparent uh, in that sense and um this just uh, as i understand it's just literally charges for the for the, the, the amount of data that's been stored without charging for every time you access it so it complements our uh, advanced analytics and the um forensic search functionality because that can you know um give you the capabilities of search through loads of video footage within a few seconds but that means loads of touch points of data uh in that in that environment um but in likewise with the cloud functionality and uh, different applications uh you expand the functionality of the um or purpose of the system uh, security system so it's no longer just a, a perimeter or intrusion system it could uh add uh, value to um departments such as facility management health and safety uh and and so on and that way increasing the return on investment and technically reducing the total cost of ownership by spreading the functionality across a bigger area of the organization rather than just focusing on security. Thanks, Yuri. And you, you've nicely brought us back to the reduced sort of cost of ownership. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm interested to learn sort of what part do we should you play in lowering that cost of ownership for the end user? Uh, Hayley, I'd, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this one first, if we could, please. Yeah, um, well, total cost of ownership is kind of a massive part of what Secure Logic are all about, really. You know, we specialise in hardware, but if you come to us for a design on a system, the design will incorporate everything that wraps around the entire project. So we're not just going to look at the storage side, we will be looking at network connectivity, uh, infrastructure, 
power consumption, cooling sort of use. So the design will actually look at everything. So what that means is each individual project, we will ensure that the total cost of ownership across the entire sort of the entire thing will actually be taken into consideration and we kind of go one step further than that as well, because we will actually produce a report for our, you know, for our customers that's wrapped into that design service um, with our team of experts that actually physically shows every single cost so that people can make informed decisions for themselves. You know, it's not just us saying, you know, here's the best solution. We'll actually show a comparison. So it's quite powerful. And, and yeah, it's a, it's a proud part of why I love working there. Excellent. Well, that's uh, you know that's that's good, solid answer there. Yuri, where are you on this one? You know, you you started the conversation. Where does Action Soft come into this equation? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got uh, a very comprehensive licensing uh, in, in terms of offering, actually. So, um, like I mentioned, license uh, on-prem license is uh, a one-off cost. There is no ongoing fees. But at the same time, what the, the the amount of analytics and functionalities included in the license is uh, is quite uh, quite big in terms of you know list of features uh, compared to some of the uh, some of our competitors, um, but also um, sometimes when you've got a VMS. Uh, video management system and uh, analytics, especially AI uh, system, uh, whether it's from uh, a same vendor, some vendors have um, will require two different uh, servers uh, to be able to do this kind of functionality. Mm -hmm. Or if you've got two different vendors, again, that increases the amount of hardware you require. Uh, and the complexity of the system. And what we've done is we've consolidated that into one. So for example, with our software, um, just one machine will be able to do uh, all of the uh, functionality, including the analytics and the management of the system. But likewise, it's not limited to just that machine. We, you know, our software can scale. Uh, so as the requirements are growing, you add more cameras, you just increase um, the uh, the hardware that you've got. Uh, well, scale out or scale up, uh, whichever way uh, the customers would like to uh, accommodate for the for their growing needs. Uh, and we will work with that. You know, that's that's how we build a solution. Um, and working with our hardware partners like Seagate and Secure Logic, who understand their needs, who, with whom we've got direct communication, um, it just makes this process even smoother because we, we're able to build robust solutions um, and that uh, will, you know, future proof the system, but at the same time give that resilience and uh, reduce the, the cost for, for the customers. Lovely. And uh, the Seagate position on this, what, what's your piece of this jigsaw, David? Well, yeah, um, as Hayley alluded to earlier, because we've got, you know, uh, exceptionally scalable solutions, you know, solutions at scale from just a few terabytes to, to many petabytes. Um, and the fact that, you know, we, we really come into our own in this environment when you're talking about half a petabyte and above. That's when we start to use larger drives, really, and larger drives combine into a sh chassis means um, less power consumption, less cooling requirements, and things like that, leading to you know better economies, uh, better economies of scale. And this doesn't stop, you know. In the future, we we continue to to have bigger drives um, on our roadmap, and and because of adapt. Uh, I mentioned earlier, we can combine different capacity drives within a volume. And in fact, we've got some very, very new technologies coming along, um, which have already been announced, things like Hammer. So Hammer will give us 30 plus terabyte drives this year. And again, all of that leads to uh, a lower total cost of ownership, really. Thank you. And so with the various solutions we've heard about, I suppose the burning question is which one does offer the lowest total cost of ownership? So Hayley, your thoughts on that, please. Mm, it's not it's not a straightforward kind of yes, no, or this is the best. It's very much project by project based, I suppose, in terms of, you know, what cameras are being used, um, length of storage, etc. So kind of to touch back on what I was saying about the, the project design service, you know, that's when you lean on, on good partners because the design service will be put together, taking every increment into account. So, you know, the best cost of 
ownership will depend on a, a myriad of things and the secure logic design team are there to make sure that all of those uh, components are taken into place or taken into consideration sorry to, to produce the best total cost of ownership on each individual project you know it's not a one size fits all so that's what we're here for lovely thank you for expanding out on that and yuri do you have a preference um i agree with Hayley, to be honest uh, it's uh, it's a very um a subjective i guess um kind of um uh, you know situation where it will come down to the project requirements and um like everything will need to be taken at, into account for example um if you use cloud um there are certain cloud can simplify the maintenance right uh, so obviously that's done by some by cloud provider um and some of the costs can be reduced with the cloud because it's um it's it's price on demand so if the demand is low obviously your cost will likewise be low but at the same time there's that risk where if the demand grows if you've got a spike in activity where there's you know where um activity on the site or something happened uh, and that could translate into a high cost at the end of the month or for ongoing period whereas with the on-prem solution you're a little bit more protected in that sense where basically you've you've deployed a system you've accommodated for the uh, future proofing and um ex you know, scalability of the system for the uh, for the next uh, period um and you, your investment is locked into that so you, you don't incurred additional charges so if you do it's very minimal so there, there is inherent risk in cloud by the same time obviously this benefit so it will come down to the requirements and where the customer want to be and how much um, maintenance they want to take on themselves or not um, so yeah we we've we'll work with every single situation we'll help understand the pros and cons in both in all the uh, options and uh, devise a, a solution that will that will achieve the best outcome for them Thank you, Yuri. So, David, can I give you the final word on that one, please? What's the Seagate position on this? Yeah, absolutely. It really is, as Haley and Yuri have said, it depends on the customer's current infrastructure and it depends what the future infrastructure is going to look like. I mean, the good news is we've got solutions um, really for most in environments when it comes to that, um, whether, as we said earlier, it's um, on-prem or hybrid cloud. Um, but it, it, you know, it's very dependent on the the type of camera, the number of cameras, the um, the re retention times, and and all of those factors um, make a make a huge difference as to what the the best solution is. And then again, you know, I I refer back to the fact that we've got experts in this field with secure logic, um, et cetera, to to go and do that. I mean, inevitably, when when it's a very large solution, you know, adding cloud seriously helps reduce those costs but um equally on on prem is or cloud is not for everyone so on prem is 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 important and we we're all good at that too so yeah thank you thank you very much you know, so you know we we've covered quite a lot of uh, the detail i'm going to start to move towards the q a so thank you very much um yuri david and Haley. but just before we get to the um q a can i understand how does our audience engage with you further and so um amir you're going to join us to answer to this one if i can put that to you to talk to us about how uh, people can benefit from seagate's knowledge please yeah of course so uh we at seagate we have a uh, community for our partners which we call the seagate partner program in this uh, platform, you can find training sources, uh, education materials, uh, or demand generation materials. Uh, we offer marketing support for those who are uh, not yet working with Seagate. Uh, we can help you onboard uh, your Seagate portfolio, uh, make sure that you have the right tools um, at your disposal, and make sure that you uh, yeah, bring the right message to the market. Furthermore, uh, in our partner program we have personalized uh, the specialisms that you can offer as a reseller uh, whether you're a surveillance installer or a system builder we have the right uh, training sources for you and we are there to help you um, when it comes to systems uh, which is very specific of course and very technical we also offer uh, specific certifications uh, we have two tracks 
uh, where you can uh, find different types of modules, uh, one for sales professional and the other ones for uh, engineers. When you complete all those courses, uh, you can complete that with an exam. And once you pass that exam, you can get certified uh, by Seagate and you will receive a certification uh, from us directly. Uh, I want to highlight that the training sources are also available for those uh, who are not a reseller. Uh, but are very tech enthusiastic uh, or they just want to learn more uh, about specific uh, technologies, um, whether it's from Seagate or from our partners. Uh, our training platform, which is called currently Champions, is available for everyone. Uh, please visit that website if you want to have uh, more in-depth trainings about our portfolio. Uh, and I think, Peter, that summarizes uh, what I wanted to highlight here. Uh, in this slide. If there are any questions, uh, yeah, please feel free to uh, state your questions in the Q&A, and I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Amir. And just to remind everybody that if you visit the, the chat in this call, you can find Amir's details and more about the Seagate program and, of course, more about um, our other partners that are on the call with us today. Uh, Yuri, can you just um, talk to us about how people can engage with you further, please? Of course, yeah. Well, we've got uh, um, my contact details in, in the chat. So if anyone wants to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, send me an email, or give us a call, we'll be happy to uh, talk to you. Um, and uh, you can follow us uh, for uh, um, subscribe to our newsletter on the website as well for any uh, new analytics or any um, new events that we're doing as well, because we will uh, we regularly organize uh, training days as well with uh, jointly with partners as well like Secure Logic and Seagate uh, to um, demonstrate how the uh, how the system can function and uh, the, the you know how, the best way to uh, get the most out of it as well uh, and uh, some other uh, events. So yeah, just uh, reach out to us on on any channel that's of preference. <laughs> Lovely, thank you, Yuri. And Hayley, how do we uh, reach you at Secure Logic? Well, we're a very approachable bunch, and like everyone said, there's lots of contact details in the chat. But we actually we're a lucky company. You know, we specialise in hardware, as we've kind of established today. But within the business, we have some some varied expertise that cover the entire the entirety of a physical security project from you know from end to end. So what we decided to do was actually to try and share all of the knowledge that we've gleaned over the last 11, whatever it is, years. Um, so we've got a, a big bunch of webinars that are coming up. So not just subjects that we think you might like to know. We did some really in-depth sort of market research to find out exactly, you know, what is the average integrator looking to, to learn and understand so that he can promote himself or herself, should I say, uh, to his customers or her customers well. So We've got this like library of webinars and there is a link, I believe, in the chat at the moment. So it'd be really, really wonderful if you kind of want to have a look at the agenda of what's available to, to join us and 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 learn. Let's learn together. That's lovely. Thank you, Hayley. I do love your energy as well. I have to say <laughs> that's come across so well. Thank you. Um, so Thank you. let's move into our, our Q&A. We've had a number of questions. Uh, put to the panelists uh, as we've been proceeding. Uh, so first question really uh, regarding ADAPTS, can Seagate explain the key benefit of this over the standard RAID solution? So, yeah, David. yeah, absolutely. Um, so when, when you take um, a traditional RAID, like RAID 5 or RAID 6, you've got um, uh parity drives raid five's got you know the ability to have a single drive failure without any data loss and raid six a couple of drive failures without any data loss and adapt sits um in the raid six kind of camp it's a razor coded form of of data protection um but it but it's superior so not only can we lose one or two drives at, a, at any one time it really improves those rebuild times so if we take an example in a traditional RAID 6 environment, um, the, the rebuild time of a 20 terabyte drive is probably going to be in the region of a week. Um, and, and to be honest, that's just blatantly un unacceptable these days in these sort of environments, because, you know, if you have one drive, drive failure, will you have another, et cetera, and so forth. And it really, really starts to put your data at risk. 
adapt adapt is is clever in that it brings those rebuild times instead of being um a week or many many days to a week it brings it down to uh a few hours um and what's even better is when you have one drive failure you have a second drive failure and you've got data that's vulnerable it rebuilds that data as a priority so that really is down to minutes or or, or just maybe one hour to get that that data protection back where you can have a yet another drive failure so it's it's really about um those sort of aspects it's got some fringe benefits as well in that we can um have a volume with varying drives drive capacities with adapt which really future protects that environment because you can grow grow that volume adapt can take um up to 128 drives within a volume so if you're starting smallish um with 20 terabyte drives today you know you may grow it with 22 terabyte drives and you get access to all of that capacity and that helps protect you in in the future so that's that's a little bit of an overview of adapt thank you i appreciate that david and how does adr work that's a nice open question how does adr work you yeah, well, that, that that integrates very nicely um with adapt actually you have to be running an adapt solution to to to, to use the adr and adr is um autonomous drive regeneration and this is a real eco-friendly and and low touch um ability that seagate have and only seagate can do this sort of thing because we've got um, that technology where we've designed the drives in in one one part, the chassis in the other, and and the controls that uh, that cover this um, as a third part. So so we've got this end to end solution. But what um, ADR does is it can uh, modify and repair a drive should there be a failure within that drive. And I'll give you an example. Um, failures in disk drives, whether it be Seagate's or anyone's, are often heads. Or, or media failures and and a drive is built up of lots of different platters so an example a 20 terabyte drive has 10 platters in it each platter has a top and a bottom surface that has data and head recording capabilities should one of those surfaces fail or a head fail normally that drive would be uh, marked as bad and an engineer would have to come and replace it however with ADR, what we can do is we take that drive offline momentarily, we examine what's wrong with it. And if if it's a head or a platter um, problem, we can eliminate that platter and reintroduce that drive back into the system without that uh, surface in play. So as an example, a 20 terabyte drive would become a 19 terabyte drive. And because ADAPT accepts different capacity um, drives, we, we just reintroduce it. And there's enough um spare capacity in the solution to to do that many many times that makes the system really low touch um and extremely reliable so that's it it adds to all of those sort of features lovely thank you david so moving us on now then for an integrated system with many subsystems do i need to buy hardware from the different manufacturers for instance storage and access control etc so that's a fair question um yuri Let's put that one to you. Do people need yeah, to remind um, all of you? No, uh, well, in, in terms of the uh, hardware, obviously um, that can be consolidated. So when it comes down to um, for, to get access soft to on the server, um, our partnership with SecureLogic, SecureLogic will build the server around our requirements, and they can even preload the software onto it. So when when uh, when a customer gets the server delivered, it's already got the software, it's got the all the prerequisites uh, on it, so it's a consolidated uh, service. Obviously, we, when it comes down to access control or the um, third-party systems that we need to integrate, um, yeah, that that's something that will have to be purchased uh, from uh, the vendors themselves uh, or through uh, our mutual uh, distributors. So where again, they can consolidate the uh, the purchasing process uh, on that level, and um, and we will we'll work with uh, with those vendors to ensure that the, our system is integrated and set up correctly. Um, so, I mean, from the point of actually deploying the system, uh, we're very hands-on. So we will ensure that uh, our customers have the minimal point of contact um, uh, when it comes down to deploying the system. So they don't have to 
go from one vendor to the other, try and figure out and be, you know, be the middleman uh, between between vendors. We will we will step in and take ownership. And likewise, you know, um, working with Securologic for so many years, they have the same attitude and so is uh, Seagate as well. So this is what makes this partnership so so um, so good because we will kind of take ownership of other people's re you know responsibilities as well and make sure it's delivered. It, it, Can it, I just it, jump in there? Is that all right? Sure, of course, yeah, it is. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, we're here today to talk about this particular sort of set of partnerships. But when we're designing a system, SecureLogic also have the ability to provide access control machines so it can sit side by side. Um, designing that system, we would take all of the different platforms into consideration. Uh, you know, on, on occasions, we have a range of all in one machines. So, you know, depending on whether it's the right solution for each individual particular application, you know, SecureLogic can actually provide all of that. Thank you. You know, between the, the three parties, it becomes a very viable, considered offer, doesn't it? The way that you're integrating and, and supporting each other to deliver the best to the end user, it's it's refreshing to see. Uh, so let's just talk a little bit further about that then, Hayley, regarding, you know, what you just mentioned. Yeah. The design, from the design side. Um, is this done by all of the separate companies or do you work together? Who would sorry. I liaise? Peter, sorry, you broke up. Can you say that again? Of course, I yes. I can only so, answer it if I can hear it. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be able to answer this one. So um, regarding the design service that you just mentioned, is yep. this done by all of the separate entities or do you work together? If I was a customer, who would I liaise with regarding this element? Well, listen, I've, I can only speak from SecureLogic's perspective. We would always liaise with all of the different players within that solution. But a SecureLogic design, when we add all the pieces together, you know, the sand storage and sort of obviously putting software on and what have you, as Yuri mentioned, it all comes fully loaded. But we would take full and complete ownership of that design because we have what's called a design guarantee. So if we've worked together, so our design team and, and our client with the, with the players that are involved, our partners, we would actually get all of the information. And as long as we've been able to get everything that we need, we'll put together a design that will obviously include a quote, uh, but it will also include sort of full drawings, not just of our hardware, but of the entire uh, architecture of the site. Like I said earlier, it'll include things like power usage. So finding out UPS needs, You've just got to look at the security drawing and it's easy to do. Network connectivity will tell you how much, you know, how much pipe you need to bring in and out of the server, et cetera. It will show camera resilience, all sorts of different things. But so we have a warranty service. So once that's done properly and we provide that for you, um, it's guaranteed, which means if there's any problems, it'll be fixed at SecureLogic's cost. Uh, it's an offer that we've had for many, many, many years that hasn't had a single claim. So that's just our our promise to, to our customers that we take this very seriously. And then tagged on to the end of that for sort of what I would call more substantial size projects is a full technical submission, which is particularly useful for, for consultants where, you know, you want to drill into the finer detail of every aspect. So, yeah. Okay, well, the questions are coming through thick and fast for you, actually, Hayley. So I've just been. Oh asked no! Whether... Can you not all leave me alone? <laughs> <laughs> I've just been asked whether Secure Logic support private cloud configuration. Uh, yeah, we support everything. So we can uh, give you advice, and we have the ability. To be honest, it's not a subject that I'm that skilled on. So. I will allow our team to answer that in the chat, but yes, we do have much more than just on-prem storage knowledge. We can support that. And we have some ways where we can help assist with that sort of software-based. Thank you. And for projects where, you know, you would, we require training to secure logic, provide pre-staging and training? Is that... Yeah, absolutely. We've got a whole portfolio of training um, training sort of materials that we deliver to various different customers, whether they be an integrator or one of our partners. Uh, yes. So jump in the chat. I'll happily send you an email later with our big plethora, our logical library, as I like to call it. Thank you. You mentioned that different systems would benefit from different solution types. 
are there guarantees in place should you design a system that that it will be fit for purpose and i think we can sort of open that one up a little but if you can just give me a, a headline view on that Haley. yeah absolutely as long as we've worked together as i said earlier you know our, our technical team have been able to communicate with the sort of with the parties involved and get the right amount of information we will stand by it with a full warranty yes and seagate um david did i just ask you about that Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I went on mute for a moment. Um, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's why we partner with uh, Secure Logic and, and Axon Soft. You know, that these guys are absolute experts at this, so we trust them, them implicitly. And, and we're to help with, we're here to help back that up at the end of the day. So, yeah, um, there's, it's, A, it's not going to be misspecced because these guys are experts, but we're here to help correct anything should there ever be a problem, which is unlikely. Thank you, David. And, and Yuri, action sauce view on this, please. Yeah, exactly the same. So, we, you know, as long as we're involved in design and uh, um, building the solution right from the beginning, we're able to uh, analyze all the requirements properly and advise on uh, what uh, how the solution would look like. And um, then, as we're building the um, the solution, we you know we we will um, guarantee that it will it will be sufficient uh, and uh, obviously with uh, future proofing in place um but likewise you know we can uh, we can do proof of concepts uh to demonstrate the functionality or the the capabilities beforehand as well so um if uh, there's a, a unique request sometimes we've got some very interesting uh, applications where analytics can, can be deployed for example in like health and safety environment uh, which is just a little bit outside of uh, security uh, you know the the kind of the original industry that we're in uh, but um, we, we can demonstrate that functionality with proof of concepts but as we then take it to the next stage and build the uh, scalable solution of course we will we will stand behind it and we will guarantee the, the functionality behind it Thank you. So I think the takeaway there is um, users should be talking to you as their concept in what they think they need so that they can get some proper guidance and support from the triage that you are. Um, so that's that's good to know that the earlier that people talk to you, the better for it is what I'm, I'm hearing there. Let's um, shift the... Yes, Jerry, sorry. I just want to add, so uh, yeah, when, when it comes down to like... Um, Hardware requirements, for example, from our side, we do usually recommend not to use uh, off the shelf like IT centric uh, service or hardware because, or like, you know, just standard drives. Uh, that can be sometimes a, a misconception where it's like, oh, well, it's hardware is just hardware. But uh, when it comes to our security uh, with video and so on, um, the, yeah, it does require sometimes a specific hardware and the IT centric hardware can, um, it, it's, it's, there's some nuances that we we can't usually you know uh, guarantee as well when when we actually build this a, a, you know a, a system around the requirements. Okay, I just thank you. butt in yeah. as well quickly before we move on. Sorry, no, not, um, not. just to sort of further on, Yuri mentioned about proof of concepts, and yeah, obviously you know that's available here at Security as well. But we actually have a software tool called Logical Benchmark, which is something that allows us for example if someone's looking at a project we can actually logically load you know the right amount of cameras the right kind of software etc analytics and tools and actually create reports to, to show how that is solution is actually working so it doesn't have to be an on-prem off-site proof of concept it can be something that we can do at, at our um our manufacturing plant which is just about to move actually so it's it's grown massively i've got a new plant um so lots more space to be able to provide these types of reports for for people who need that kind of extra reassurance you know that that bluebird project that they're doing or whatever lovely thank you Hayley. Right, the slight turn uh, from where we've been, you know, we, we're going to talk a bit about sustainability. We're seeing more and more points of sustainability, you know, across the market. Do you have solution elements that would tick points for these? So, Seagate, I'm going to leave you to last, Hayley, because I know your answer here. But David, what yeah. is Seagate doing with, with regards to sustainability? We, we do a few things. Um, I mentioned one earlier, really, a technology ADR. I mean, if if we're um, 
keeping most of the capacity of a drive just because of a, a single surface failure um that's very very good from this perspective you know we're keeping 19 terabytes that would normally be thrown away or, or you know 19 terabytes of good hardware out of a 20 terabyte disk that would normally th be thrown away and as time marches on and drives get bigger we mentioned earlier that hammer drive um uh, are going to 30 plus terabytes before the end of the year and as uh, you know if you look beyond that you're, you're talking about very large capacities and this becomes more and more important that sort of technology becomes more and more important but also if a, if a drive does fail we we um also have the ability to um re recycle those at the end of the day as well so yeah all, all good from that perspective or lots of lots of good stuff from that perspective Thank you. And Yuri, I pose that one to you, if I may. You're a software provider. It might be a bit awkward, yeah. but what, what are you what are your what's your attitude here to sustainability? Yeah, absolutely. We obviously uh support the you know looking after the environment and trying to do what we can as well to bring uh, more sustainable solutions to the market. The way we have uh, attacked this is from the the way we um we, we we build our solution and the the processing requirements around this so for example um the analytics uh we try to optimize the the processing of uh, video analytics to a point where it requires less less power uh which translates into less hardware less um electricity being used and and so on um and um yeah also you can deploy a, a, I mean, a solution to also the monitor the um, the health check of, of the system uh, and uh, kind of adapt uh, the analytics to to the demand really. So basically, you know, with, with scheduling and role based solution, then again, like creating that dynamic solution rather than static and constantly full power all the time. Uh, but uh, and for example, the um, the resilience, the fault tolerance of, of our solution, uh, because we built this, uh, the scalability around not just like a, a standby server needs to be uh, on all the time, just in case the, the main server fails. So technically, that's a, a redundant hardware just sitting there, cons potentially consuming a little bit of power or a lot of power, depending on the, on the conditions. But um, we, we built this so they can... Um, all the hardware can be uh, engaged and uh, operating uh, at a certain capacity. And then obviously if there's a failure, the rest of the infrastructure will uh, take on the load and will support it for a short period of time until the hardware is replaced. So that way we're reducing the wastage of, of, uh, of resources. You know, we're trying to optimize that. Thank you. And Hayley. How is secure logic contributing to sustainability? Oh, I don't know. How long have you got? <laughs> um, to, to be honest, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's very, very big. So to, to go right to the basics, you know, when we design a system, um, it is fully optimised. So right at the very, very beginning of when you install a secure logic integrated solution, we will have optimised that against like an IT centric, as Yuri mentioned, off the shelf solution. So massively reducing the amount of hardware that needs to go into a rack. So that you can imagine how much energy reduction that is. Huge, huge improvement on, you know, the sustainability for the planet. Um, we also load every single uh, piece of hardware with a software tool, like a hardware monitoring tool called Logical Health Check Pro, which means customers can actually sort of be proactive in terms of, you know, looking after sites so they're not driving backwards and forwards to site fixing things because we can give them a little heads up when something might need looking at during a, a standard maintenance. Then you move on to things like, oh my goodness, just uh, the fact that we manufacture here in the UK, you know, many of our, many of the other choices, let's say, would be dragging hardware around the planet before it gets kind of, logoed and then loaded and tested and what have you we just build it here test it load all the software all the os and send it out so you know another massive benefit and then you know we are also planting a tree in ireland for every single server that we we sell so we have our own forest at the moment um and we've got plans to be carbon neutral i forget when it's going to be but it's very soon I mentioned a little while ago about our lovely new manufacturing plant, and I can't remember all of the millions of things that we've done to make it so sustainable, but it's it's incredible, you know, sustainability is important for us all, and it's, it's a buzzword, you know, let's face it, but 
this is actually something that Secure Logic take really, really seriously. And we probably should change the logo to, to green, actually, but I don't know. Robin might kill me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it is genuinely good to see uh, an active contribution rather than just a, a statement of intent that we see from mm. manufacturers. You are living to it at Secure Logic, which is why I left you to uh, last, because I do respect the work that you're doing in that area. Um, just very quickly, you've pretty much answered this in, in uh, your, the last few minutes, but just to be crystal clear, we've been asked, are Secure Logic servers rebrands from somewhere else? Where are they made? And I think you're confirming UK. Secure Logic servers are built, loaded with the required software, tested. Every single one is tested before it leaves the building and it all happens in our UK manufacturing plant. And like I said, it's, it's I don't know when the open date is. It's very soon. I think we're mid moving in at the moment. Um, and once it's open, we'll be having some open days so people can come and have an actual look. You know, it's going to have a lovely, oh, just loads of things. But yes, there'll be, there'll be some information released on LinkedIn and across the market to, to invite people in. We will keep a, a working eye on that and look forward to visiting the new sustainable office facility. Yeah. Um, thank you. And um, Yuri, you'll be delighted to know we're being um, asked, how easy is it to deploy Axon 1 on premise and in the cloud? And what is the difference between the two types of deployment? Could you answer that for us, please? Sure. Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's actually quite easy. Um, literally just download the software from a website, uh, install it onto a server. And I mean, you can have the software running within half an hour. The complexity comes with the, the size of the system uh, and when you add uh, the, well, cameras or integrated uh, third-party systems into it. Uh, but even then, you know, well, most of the uh, like camera discovery and uh, configuration uh, from our software is done quite quick. Uh, so automated to a degree where it will discover your cameras, you can enter the password and you can add cam uh, old cameras with a couple of clicks. Um, and if you obviously buy the, uh, we work together with Secure Logic uh, for the solution that the customer, uh, our clients were uh, looking for, then you don't need to uh, do the downloads and install. You just get the server and the configuration part, uh, like I mentioned, is, is straightforward. Um, now, the difference between the on-prem uh, deployment and in the cloud, um, there's actually, well, if, if you want to just re replicate the, the setup uh, or move it from on-premise to the cloud, it's literally creating a virtual machine in a cloud and, and it's a similar process or, you know, private cloud if you've got uh, your own data center. Um, the if we're talking about VSAS, uh, so it's like multi-tenant, multi-client kind of deployment. Obviously, we've got um, a whole um, cloud architecture uh, requirements that we can help our clients with. So we'll uh, be able to help them with Kubernetes and other management tools that we can um, control the uh, the containers uh, and scalability. Uh, so it, it, we, this usually is applied to like a bigger installs, bigger systems, potentially um, uh, multinational clients uh, or like uh, telecommunications companies who want to resell it onto their uh, to the user base as a as a solution. So, but yeah, it's basically our system um, on a simple um, system requirements can be very easy very quick to deploy but likewise we support enterprise level requirements and at that point where we'd we really emphasize you know coming to us um to just to make sure that the all the prerequisites have been met and everything else but in terms of deployment it's straightforward and we hands-on to help our customers to deploy that as well thank you yuri that's um, good to understand that and that sort of concedes the questions that we've been asked is there anything that any of the panelists would like to quickly add before I wrap up and say thank you. No, nope. I think we, we've had a good session here today. Thank you to Seagate, to Secure Logic and to Action Soft for um, sharing with us uh, how we can maximize our um, systems. We appreciate that. Just to remind um, viewers that we've got all the information you need in the chat so that you can reach out to Amir if you want to learn more about the Seagate program and each of the individual speakers will be happy to engage with you to um, support you further. We appreciate you joining us today.
for uh, this session and thank you for joining us enjoy the rest of your day thank you thanks everyone thank Goodbye. you everyone take care Good day.